Ahead on the latest episode of the Tiger Football Report, we will talk with the head coach of the Tigers, Rob Ambrose, about the Tigers' win over North Carolina Central. Later in the show, we'll talk about the Tigers' next opponent, the Maine Black Bears, as we have now entered conference play. The Tiger Football Report starts now. Hello Tiger fans and welcome back to another edition of the Tiger Football Report. I'm your host Spiro Marikas. Last week the Tigers wrapped up the non-conference portion of their schedule and in the process they got their offense back on track in their 31-20 win over the North Carolina Central Eagles. The Tigers wrapped up, racked up 422 yards of total offense with over 260 of those yards coming on the ground. The win raised the Tigers back to 500 at 2-2. Two and with that, let's bring in the head coach of the Tigers, Rob Ambrose. And coach, you had that big output offensively. I know you said before the season started you needed all of nine conference play to get this young offense ready. When you look at the offensive line, how do you see it growing through the first four games? <laughs> well, I, I thought it was uh, a little stale and stagnant when we started and uh, felt that way coming out of camp. It was very frustrating. Uh, part of it was the kids didn't want to take the bull by the horns and – it put us in a tough situation of figuring out who to play and where. But once we actually started playing games, uh, the fog cleared a little bit, and they've really grown. If you've watched us, they've grown week after week after week. And uh, it seems more of a cohesive unit, a more intelligent unit. And we're just getting better. I, I couldn't ask for any more. The run game obviously was very good against North Carolina Central and, and was pretty good against Delaware State the week before. Is it easier for an offensive line to run block than it is to pass block? Uh, that's a philosophy that you'd have to ask guys. It depends on their own personalities. There's two types of people in the world in the physical land. There's ones that give it and the ones that take it. And when you're, you ask those guys in those chuck and duck offenses, how frustrating it is for them because they're always in a backwards mode. They're always protecting. They're always backpedaling and they're getting punched for the most part. When you run the ball, you can be the puncher. You can be the hammer and they get to be the nail. So from my own personal experiences growing up and actually playing on the offensive line at a young age and learning a lot about football, as an offensive lineman, you would like to do both. You would like to be able to set back a little bit, ha ha, can't get me, but you also want to be the aggressor. And uh, we do that. That's where, you know, we try to be 50-50-ish, and uh, it gives them a chance to do both. The game against North Carolina Central on Saturday, um, one thing that they did, and Gordy Combs mentioned this up in the booth, because Derek Joseph had, again, a very good game returning punts. Why do they continue to kick to him? The other the people watch this show. Don't ask. Stop that. Uh, because he's the returner. Right? What are they going to do, kick it out of bounds? I mean, seriously. He, uh, it's going to get to the point if, if the success that we're having on teams continues in the return game that you will see punts that are direct kicked out of bounds. And even you're going to see more squib kicks where they hope the ball bounces around and we don't get a clean shot at it. Uh, and even kickoffs that go out of bounds and go, screw it, we'll just take it from there and let it be. Uh, the, while Derek's doing a good job, and this is, you know, as I said in the past with Terrence and his successes, he'd be the first one to tell you a good offensive line makes a good running back. We're getting better on special teams in all aspects of that. And it shows up in the numbers in the return game. So Coach Carey is doing a great job. The kids are buying in in large chunks now. We're better on coverage, we're better on returns. It, it's fun to... It's fun yeah, to. If, you, if you look at the kick returns, you've given up 161 yard, or you take that out, and teams are averaging less than 20 yards against you. And North Carolina Central, many times they had a very long field they had to deal with. Yeah, and it, that, which was a nice change, considering right. that uh, the week before at Delaware State, we probably had, minus the one return, we probably had the worst field position we've ever had, ever. So uh, yeah, if it, changing, changing field position and momentum swings. Having big returns or big hits, big plays, locking them down in teams, uh, they're morale builders. They're momentum swingers. And, uh, uh, and we just get, I don't want to beat a, a live horse, but we're getting better every week. 
You mentioned that after the Dell State game that, that these guys needed to taste victory. They needed to, to feel what it took to win a football game. And the practice was, was much more spirited because they had felt that victory against Dell State. How about this week after North Carolina Central, now two in a row? Do you see even more of an advancement? You do, especially mentally. Then, you know, all of a sudden we've, we've built a little bit of foundation in offensive defense and even in special teams. And now we're adding to it a little bit. We're tweaking. And, and you can see the kids really zeroed in on what we're trying to do. We're not, we don't go out there to try to run plays now. We go try to run plays versus defense and attack the defense. It's a much – it's stepping up the ladder into the type of game that these kids can do. And uh, if we can stay on this course, you're, you're not going to see the same offense every week. You're going to see different tweaks. And that's going to give us a chance then smoke and mirror machine. You want to prepare for what we did for the last two weeks? Oh, look at this. It was something new this week. So in, in all three phases of the game, I really watched the kids study the game this week. They're excited to play. They know it's, you know, they know it's conference play. But they're going to add the physical on Saturday. But this week was a great study week. One thing we saw against North Carolina Central, Spencer Wilkins, 100, over 100 yards receiving. And Spencer, a guy that got hurt last year, and I know maybe it took him a couple of games to get back into the flow of things. But we saw the old Spencer Wilkins on Saturday against North Carolina Central. I love Spencer Wilkins. I've loved Spencer Wilkins for a long, long time, and I will continue to love Spencer Wilkins after he's gone. At Spencer's slow development, I'm going to take as my own fault because up until Saturday, I forgot. See, on the first offensive play of the game, Spencer blocked a guy in the back again. Spencer's had a penalty in the last three games, and he's a veteran and a senior and a guy that's been to war many, many times, and I've just discounted that and let it go. I had some very, very choice words for Spencer on the sidelines, and I forgot how he responds to that. He responded incredibly well, turned his game from a 10 to a 20, and caught every, just caught the air out of the ball, blocked his rear end off, and led. So I'm pretty much sure during pregame this year, I'm going to yell at Sp this week. I'm going to yell at Spencer really, really loud, and he's going to play really well. When we come back on the Tiger Football Report, we will discuss some of the Tigers' standout performances, including a sophomore running back that rushed his way into the record books. We'll tell you all about it right after this. Virtual Wallet can help you be that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide, save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. Brian Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. We got the paper! Woo! His pit crew follows him everywhere. Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah! And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for errands. No credit needed. I'll take it. Woo! Woo! Congrats. Errands makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride, pride in our city, Pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible health care system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called peanut butter indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years to Wise Markets, and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome back to the Tiger Football Report. I'm Spiro Marikas, joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Rob Ambrose. And 
Coach, if you remember back to last week's episode, the Tiger tidbit told us that Darius Victor needed just 97 yards to eclipse the 1,000-yard mark in his career. Well, he did slightly better about, uh, than that against the North Carolina Central Eagles as he rushed for 194 yards and three touchdowns. He became the 24th Tiger in history to rush for 1,000 yards. This year he's become the feature back after last year being the CAA Rookie of the Year. Assess how he's been handling his new role. Extremely well. I uh, could not ask for more. For uh, it, It's been the experience that guys that have success as freshmen, they always get the sophomore jinx. They always start slow. Uh, there is a subconscious attitude that they've made it, that the work that they did to get there they don't have to do anymore because they've arrived. That's not him. He works just as hard, if not harder. And the, the greatest part about him is, you know, we put Markel Dickerson in there and how much he's coaching this kid all week long. He's a sophomore, a true sophomore, coaching a true freshman and coaching him like he's a senior. I, I, no, he's, he is everything we'd ask him to be. You know, we're, we're learning what kind of every down back he can be. You know, some of the stuff that we ran with Terrence, it's not necessarily Darius's bread and butter. And some of the stuff that uh, we're doing now, he does a little bit better than Terrence. So it's, it's finding his strengths as we go and uh, calling plays schematically that fit his style. But he is doing, <laughs> he's doing the one thing consistently that we know he would do, and that's be an incredibly physical football player. The one trait that he does have, obviously the running styles are mm -hmm. completely different, Terrence and, and Darius, but the one thing that they do the same, they both always fall forward. So they're always at the end going to gain that extra yard. Mm -hmm. the, the play is not over until the play is over. And uh, whether it's for personal reasons where you want to just get one more yard because that adds to your stat line or because that one more yard makes a difference in winning and losing and you're just an incredible team player or – they're just gifted to be forward-falling human beings. We definitely recruited well and putting the ball in the right people's hands to keep getting one more yard all the time. Talk about Dickerson a little bit because we saw him uh, very briefly against Dell State a little more this past week. Is his role going to expand as the season goes on? He is right now certifiably number two. And, uh, you know, clearly Darius can't play every play. And, he, uh, and the good part about him is, you know, when you put a freshman in there, you're a little worried about when it comes to protection. Yeah. Running backs have natural instincts, even if they don't under, understand the scheme that well. They understand the general, where the hole is. They see it, they hit it, they run, they have balance. It's great. Pass protection is a schematic, intelligent thing before you can even discuss physicality. And he gets it. He really does. And that's nice that you know, we're going to be able to let him play without having to sub him out. He's just not a running back. He's actually a true back. Two and two coming out of conference, a non-conference play. Obviously, you would prefer to be 4-0. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Where do you stand, do you think, from a learning, from where these kids have learned and where you expected to be after four weeks heading into the CAA play? I said last week I thought we were behind. I wish we were, I wish we were where we were week one. It, like last week, I wish we were in week one. I would say overall, because of the strides we made in the game, we're probably only about a week behind of what I anticipated. And considering some of the injuries we've had, that, and the anticipation goes with having Sean Flaherty as your starting center, who's you know, out completely, and being as deep as we need to be at multiple positions this early in the season, uh, I give the kids a lot of credit that we are only about a week behind. But we're gaining stride week by week. It's, it's not, we're not taking the amount of steps. First we were crawling, we were always moving forward. We were crawling, then we were walking, now we're running. Now we're running with greater stride length. We're getting you know, faster, to use the analogy. So uh, the growth is there, and it's moving at a better rate. Defensively, Ryan Dallaire leads the team with three sacks. James Sims continues to just pile up tackle after tackle. And then your safeties. Donnell Lewis, every week, just seems to make a play that you go, wow. This past week, Chris Carpenter came up with a great interception at a key moment, and that was a play where it looked like the wide receiver was wide open. Christian does cover a lot of ground, and uh, <laughs> when the ball's in the air, I, I'll, I'll use the, the game speed versus track speed. You know when you watch the combine and all these guys are running 4-2s and 4 3 I've never seen one of these 4-2s or 4-3s on a football field with helmets and pads. You were around, you saw Mark Orlando play. I don't think Mark Orlando ever ran a, better than a 4-7 timed. But when the ball was in the air, he might have been the fastest individual I've ever seen in my life. 
Christian's got a 33, 35-inch vertical jump, except when the ball's in the air. And then he has whatever the vertical jump is needed to make. And let's not forget now, he made the hit on the fourth down stop that, towards the end of the game that pretty much said, no, this, this game's going to be ours. So, he, you know, for a guy who was a little bit behind because of the injuries he had in camp, he too is making great strides now and moving at a much faster pace and improvement. I've got to touch on the play that I never knew existed Huh. And I think most people didn't know existed, but there were a couple of them on Saturday, and that is the one-point safety, where you guys blocked the extra point, but somehow North Carolina Central got a point, got a point. because of it. We gave it to them. Can you explain sure. what happened on that play? And is that a rule that has always been in existence? Yes. That, that rule's been in existence. This is one of those probably five to seven ridiculously quirky rules that when you go, you know, you get the head coach manual that doesn't exist. You go read the rule book and you start reading it and you're trying to explain it to yourself. Then you draw it up on the board and you're like, what, what, what? Now you finally see the example. We block the kick. The standard rule is when the kick gets blocked forward, it's crossing the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. that unless there's some extenuating circumstance, you get away from the ball. The reason being, the ball crosses the line of scrimmage and you catch the ball in the air, the game is live, the ball is live. So you can return it. But if you get tackled and fumble the ball, it's, it's a live ball. It's anybody's business. Well, we blocked it. Max Tejada caught it, realized he wasn't supposed to catch it. And instead of falling down, he threw the ball on the ground, at which time the ball bounced and hit one of North Carolina's players and went into the end zone. And because it, that's how it went into the end zone, being it was still a live ball. Ty Smith knew this, tried to pick the ball up and get it out of the end zone. When he did, he stepped on the end line, plays over, one point safety. And your entire life, Spiro, good odds, you will never see this again. <laughs> well, I've only seen it Oregon once Oregon State had it happen, and Oregon had it happen. So it happened on three different games last Saturday. On the same day? On the same day. Oh, May not be another one for another 20 it's years. It's like an eclipse. On the other side of this break, we will dive into the Tigers' first CAA game when they host Maine on Saturday. But before we go, let's first take a look at this week's Tiger tidbit presented by Under Armour. Did you know the last four times that Towson and Maine have met, the game has been decided by 10 points or less with each team winning twice. So what you got on deck? Skyfall, lean in, then some Pinterest. You? Twitter, Minecraft, and then some Hunger Games. Boom. Oh, you guys are all set, huh? Oh, yeah. New Amazon Fire Phone. It comes with Amazon Prime. Tons of cool stuff for no extra charge. Really? It comes with Amazon Prime? Yeah. There's so much to watch. I've been on this earth nine years. I've never seen anything like it. The new Amazon Fire Phone, with a full year of Prime included, exclusively on AT&T. Mariner Finance is a consumer finance company, so we offer personal loans. Mariner Finance is a great place to work. It's a great thing for anyone with the entrepreneurial spirit. Everybody in every office has an opportunity to achieve and grow. Be your own leader. Be a leader amongst uh, the fellow co-workers in your office. The training and development that we do at Mariner Finance is one-on-one. -on -one. Someone who has been there, done it, experienced it. There is no better feeling. Learn with us. Grow with us. Grow with us. Brian Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. He got the paper! Woo! His pit crew follows him everywhere. Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. <laughs> yeah! And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for errands. No credit needed, I'll take it. Woo! Woo! Congrats. Errands makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. This is where the legends live, waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. Welcome back to the Tiger Football Report. I'm Spiro Marikas alongside the head coach of the Tigers, Rob Ambrose, and coach, 
The Black Bears obviously won the CAA regular season championship last year, but they are a much different team this year. They're playing with a new quarterback after they graduated Marcus Wasilewski, who was a first-team all-conference player last year. This is a team that has scored 10 points in each of their first three games, but last week against Boston College, they were tied 10-all at halftime before they finally kind of weakened in the second half. <laughs> I would. I think I said this this week in the press conference. That I would not put any merit in those stats whatsoever. At the uh, first game of the year is Norfolk State, and for anybody who's following college football, it's a very, very good defense. And uh, when well, you want to talk about what kind of defense Boston College has, ask USC. So you know they've been put in some positions to to not be statistically successful, but Jack coaches a football team really, really well. They're going to be very well prepared for us. They're a lot like us. That they, you know, they had they built some success. Jack and I were talking about this in the summer, and in 2010, boy, we played each other, and that was a battle of just bad. It was just bad football, and then all of a sudden, if you flash forward a couple of years, here we are, winning a lot of games, both teams, then winning the conference, getting the play, you know, getting the playoffs with us, and uh, you know, being very, 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 and they went undefeated. So that's an incredible hard thing to do. They graduate graduate a lot of those guys on offense, so now they're struggling to find their cohesiveness on offense, and it shows in their inability to not put up points. But they're playing hard, and you watch them. They're getting better every week. And it's our job to keep them from getting too good this week. The other thing you always know when you play Maine is that they're going to be physical, they're going to be big, they're going to be strong. And defensively, I mean, take out the Boston College game. They've only given up 19 points in two games. Yes, which makes me worry a little bit. No, they, they, they play, uh, if you look at their guys, you know, they got one of the best linebackers in the country. At, who was uh, a true freshman All-American. I mean, he's, he's amazing. But outside of him, they, they got good football players. They play as 11 defensively, as good as anybody I've seen in the last two years. And that's with some graduations. So they're going to be, it's going to be a tough test. We're two physical teams with young offenses. And it's probably going to be the team that makes the least amount of mistakes, turns the ball over the least and has the least amount of penalties. And both teams have been very good at not turning it over. You guys had not turned it over at all until last week. You turned it over twice. Uh, Maine, their quarterbacks have not been effective, but they haven't thrown an interception, and they've only lost three fumbles. Well, maybe if they came and did the TV show with you and talked about how they hadn't turned the ball over, maybe they'll turn it over this week. Thanks, Spiro. No, it, it, it's going to be the battle of mistakes or not. It, we had this conversation today after practice that it's two similar teams that are going to play very, very physical and going to keep playing until they tell you you can't play anymore. So it's going to be the little things that make the difference in the game. And I guarantee you, anybody likes physical football, this will be a good game to come watch. How about the players? Do they know, do they feel like they need to take it up a notch because you are now in CAA play? The one guarantee, the only true guarantee to get into the playoffs is winning your conference. And, and after being through the wood chipper, so to, to be in a situation where you win the conference outright in 11 and get, you get the auto bid. And then 12, having a fantastic football team, a great football team, one that all across the country is massively respected and nobody wanted to play and not get in. Uh, the, the ghost of that still exists for us. And the kids know, you want to get in for sure. You want to take it out of the hands of the voters and the, the politicians. Just win the whole darn thing. And your first two weeks in CAA play are at home at Johnny United Stadium with Maine uh, Saturday night and then next Saturday afternoon against Stony Brook. Um, obviously, to get off to a, a good start in the conference will not only help you in the standings, but again, being a young team, they've got to keep building that confidence. It is, and, and I meet with the captains every week. And just for a little bit, we talk about you know, little bits and pieces here. But I've prepped them in their leadership. It, um, I'm one of the most boring people in the world. I don't get surprised for the most part. It's very hard to surprise me. I'll lay in bed and think of scenarios of anything and things that will never come to pass, but should any of them come to pass, I'm not unprepared for them mentally. And I told them, I said, the one thing that they're going to have to worry about with a, with a young team is what happens when it doesn't go right. When they work hard, but the ball bounces the wrong way and one little thing goes and we don't win. I said, you need to get it in your head now to start preparing for the answers of how you're going to lead through adversity at that time. Because it's your locker room, it's your team. Now, I don't disagree. We need to keep this ball rolling. And if we can win them all, then that's great. But I've yet to see, you know, I've yet to see a perfect game, a perfect season, and we will face adversity. And it's how we handle it that will determine our success or lack thereof. 
I think the young kids get that now. And I think even laying the foundation of what might come, the leaders are leading in that way to prepare them for the plus and the minus. When you look at Maine offensively, they want to run the football. They run it two-thirds of the time. What do you do defensively to try to get them into situations where they, they don't want to be, which is passing the football? I need to describe that the, the more we can put them in third and long, the better we're going to be. So the more stout we are up front, and this is, this is the more stout we are up front, making first and second down minimal yards and having great eye discipline because what's going to happen is their pass game is going to be a lot of boots, a lot of nakeds, a lot of misdirection in the pass game to count on you sticking. You know, look what, look what North Carolina Central did to us. We threw a lot of this. They, they wanted to stop the run. We, were, we play action pass them to death, and they had no answer. And that's we do. It's called good eye discipline. Stay true to your keys. Play physical, but stay true to your keys. And when they try the misdirection pass or the play action stuff, we'll, we'll be there. You mentioned putting them in third and long situations, and this is probably a sore point with you. Last year you were among the nation's leaders in third down <laughs> conversions. This year, uh, not quite, 24%. What has been the biggest difference? In, 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 and you've had a lot of third and longs. You just described it right there. That the difference in the in, – it's not last year. For the last three years, we've been 50% or more, almost 50% or more, putting us in the top 10 in the nation. Anytime you're converting on third down at a rate of 50-ish percent, you're a really, really, really good football team because the ball's in your hand and the drives keep going. With a young off, I'd say, you know, what did you say we're 20 what? 24. Oh, we're that far? We got that high? Uh, and part, of it, part of it is the situations that we're putting ourselves in. And you have to, with us, you also have to take some of those statistics away. Because you know, you know me. I, we get we get to midfield depending on the game around midfield. And I'll tell Jared, you got four downs to get to first, which changes your play calling on third down. May not, now we were two for three on fourth down last week, which is a good number. Not you want to be three for three, but uh, that as as this offensive line grows together, so will that statistic improve. All right, well, hopefully this Saturday the Tigers get back to that at least 50% mark in third down conversions. We have to take one final break, but we will be back with more of the Tiger Football Report right after this. Virtual Wallet can help you be that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide, save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride, pride in our city, Pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible health care system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called peanut butter indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How can you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packages of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. This is where the legends live waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship.
Welcome back to the Tiger Football Report. And, Coach, thanks for stopping by. And good luck against the uh, Maine Black Bears this Saturday at Johnny United Stadium. Thanks. I'm expecting the crowd to be pretty thick and uh, the tailgating to be fun and safe. But, yeah, it's going to be a great way to start off conference play. Let's hope the student turnout is as big as it has been the first two games. As we've mentioned, the Tigers are back at home this weekend when they host the Maine Black Bears on Saturday at 7 p.m. If you can't make it out to the U, don't worry. We will have the game for you live and for free right here on the Towson Sports Network. Coverage begins on TowsonTigers.com at 6.30 and at 6.45 on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 a.m. Ron Meehan, Zach Maskovich, and I will bring you all of the action. That's going to do it for this episode of the Tiger Football Report. Once again, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again real soon.